In today's episode, we are giving a great big fuck you to supremacy culture that wanted to creep in and keep me and you oppressed with this most recent launch of The Sanctuary. Welcome to the Fierce Authenticity Podcast. I'm your hostess, Sharani M. Batak, and I teach you how to have amazing relationships by doing one simple thing. Dismantling supremacy culture's internalized oppression and conditioning. Be sure that you've hit subscribe to the podcast and come on over and join me in my private newsletter community where I have a collection of specially curated tools to get you started. Simply visit www.sharanimbatuk.com slash connect to get started. Welcome back to the podcast, my friend. Today, I want to get real honest and real vulnerable with you because that is a part of what we do here. What we do is all about fierce authenticity and really being in our wholeness and sharing openly, intimately, and vulnerably. So that's exactly what I want to do with you today. And I'm not going to lie, there has been parts of me that have been resisting turning on the recording software, connecting the mic, and sitting here and speaking with you. And the reality is, even though there's been a part of me that's been resisting that, I know that One of you listening, someone here listening, needs to hear exactly what I will be sharing with you today. And so with that, I will just get right into it. (sighs) And I have to start with that really big exhale because the reality is, at the time of this recording, I have been moving through some really big feelings. And if you heard a couple podcast episodes ago, especially when I spoke about your dreams and your desires, I talked about the sanctuary, which is my new signature offer. And I say that it's new, but really it's not new. This is something that has been on my heart, on my spirit, on my soul for years and years. And it finally was ready to be born, except I may have had those Braxton Hicks contractions instead of the actual ready to born. So for the months of, when was it? I received the download towards the middle of March and then spent a good amount of the latter part of March and most of April marketing and sharing the message about the sanctuary and the magic that it is and what we're going to be doing and what's going to be transpiring. And I was certain, I was so certain that a month of marketing the sanctuary was going to be enough because I was following through with divine guidance. I had gotten the download and it was time. It truly, in my heart and soul, felt like it was time for this to be out there. So for the first week, maybe week and a half, things are going well. I'm in total faith. I'm in total trust. And then supremacy culture's sneaky ass conditioning started sneaking up on me. And I started to get into fear. And I started to get into doubt. And I started to get into scarcity and lack. And I started to get really, really attached to the outcome of what was going to happen. Would the nine women I am calling in to the sanctuary for this experience, would they find this program? Would they sign up in the tiny ass window of time I had given myself to market it? And so as that fear crept in, as all of that came in, What ended up happening is I developed an attachment to the outcome and I detached 
from the guidance of my higher power, the divine wisdom that flows through me, the spirit of my business, as my coach Simone calls it, I disconnected and detached from all of that as my attachment towards the outcomes grew. And spoiler alert, what ended up happening is at the end of the month, um, because I, like I said, I'd given myself a month to market this, and we're going to talk about the insidiousness of that, the thought that crept in to think that that was going to be okay. But what ended up happening at the end of a month was, lo and behold, spoiler alert, nobody signed up. A lot of people expressed interest in it. Like I had heard from friends that were really excited, people who shared me with their communities to share in the richness and the magic and the miracles that are going to transpire in the sanctuary. And these friends were very much, they could feel how much in alignment this offer is. And then I'd had others tell me that they have friends who are like, oh my gosh, that sounds so amazing, right? So there was all this interest and nobody signed up. So what ended up happening is I actually discovered that I was gaslighting myself. I was making myself wrong for feeling sad. I was making myself wrong for feeling disappointed. I kept trying to bypass over the sadness and the disappointment. And I was like, well, there's still time. Well, there's still time. Oh, I can still sign nine people up for this thing by then. And of course, the more frantic I got in that, the more attached to that outcome I became and the more detached I continued to be from my higher power and the divine wisdom that wants to flow through me. So what happened was I just got into that place where I was completely gaslighting my own feelings, gaslighting the feeling of sadness, gaslighting the feeling of disappointment, and I was trying to make myself wrong. And not that I was trying to make myself, I actually was making myself wrong to be experiencing these feelings. And I was just doing a total bypass over them. And I realized partially that came from stories that I learned growing up. The stories would be, oh, you're sad? What do you have to be sad about? There's nothing to be sad about. Oh, you're sad? Let me give you something to be sad about because really there's nothing to be sad about. I mean, these were the stories that I heard from various folks growing up. And I realized as I sat with it and I moved through just the the sadness and the grief that I was feeling, I realized that, oh, this is one of those ancestral stories. This is one of those multi-generational stories of not feeling sadness and not feeling disappointment and not being allowed to feel any of those feelings. And quite frankly, the only feelings people were allowed to feel, like you couldn't even really feel happy. Happiness wasn't even allowed because then it's like, oh, what are you so happy about? So there was very much this element of all you could feel was like kind of this blunted stuntedness or anger all out anger and violence and all of that, everything that comes with that, okay? So those were the only feelings that were allowed. And what I realized is like, oh yeah, it makes complete and total sense that I would have been gaslighting myself through this experience because there was most likely a time that it was not safe. For my people to feel feelings of sadness, feelings of disappointment, feelings of grief, because if they did, it could have been a life or death situation. And now, my friend, this is true of any culture that has experienced colonization, which, spoiler alert, is every single culture on this planet, whether you've been the colonizer or you've been the colonized, throughout the course of time, Everyone has had this experience somewhere, and most of us are still living in it today because let's get real, America is currently the largest imperialist nation in the world with its hands up in everything. And 
I digress. So let me get back to the point of this message. So I was sitting there and I realized like, wow, this is something that when I put it in that larger context, when I zoom out and I can see all the cultural elements, not just being a South Asian indo fijian immigrant family with triple colonization, but when I just zoom out into that larger context of the culture that we live and breathe and swim in, which is supremacy culture and all of its conditioning, I thought, oh yeah, yeah, this makes sense. And so I finally allowed myself to feel it. I allowed myself to just sit in the sadness, to just be with sad. And, you know, all of a sudden I'm seeing the scenes from Inside Out, the Disney Pixar movie Inside Out, where Joy does not want sadness to be present at all. But sadness is like, I'm here. I just want to be heard. Everything just sucks. And I hurt. But Joy kept so hard to try to push it away, right? That's what was kind of going on inside of me. The parts that were falsely hopeful and bypassing, they were like, joy, no, 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 we're not going to feel sadness. Sadness, go away, go away, go away. I'm shoving you to the side. And sadness was like, I just want to be experienced. I just want to be acknowledged. I just want someone to hear me. And so the weekend after applications closed for this round, I sat in all of that. And I didn't think about the launch. I didn't think about any of it. I literally just let myself be. And what I had been thinking throughout the whole process of that month that I spent marketing the sanctuary, what I realized is that, yes, There are people that would call this another failure. And of course, you've heard I have a couple episodes. One of them is called Failure to Launch, and one of them is called Recovering from Failure, where I speak about my actual really big failure back in September of 2020, the thing that really put me on the path that I'm on today. And the whole time I was sitting there like, this does look like an outward failure because zero people signed up. And the reality is this experience, this launch was so not a failure, not a failure at all, because I got an opportunity to once again, take a look at all of the ways supremacy culture continues to show up in me. Because my friend, this shit is so ingrained in us. It's the air we breathe. It's the waters in which we swim. It's uh, it's also where we spin and spin out. It is so pervasive and you truly cannot escape it. If you live in the modern world and have access to any form of technology, you are swimming in these waters. So as I sat and I reflected on all of the lessons that I gathered, I realized that there were some really important, important lessons that I had to learn before I could move forward with the next iteration of how the sanctuary wants to be birthed. Because remember, I am now considering this April launch to be the Braxton Hicks version of the labor. And what I realize, I mean, there's so many, and I want to share some of those gifts with you. And one of the biggest things that I learned throughout this entire process, and this one's a really fucking sneaky one, is that I, even though consciously, know in my head, in my brain, logically, I know that my value, my worth, who I am as a person is not dependent on any person, place, thing, situation, achievement, milestone. It is not dependent on anything outside of me. And yet, as I sat through the process, one of the lessons that I got an opportunity to see and look at was that on a very sneaky, subtle as fuck, unconscious level, the reason I had become so attached to that outcome 
and so attached to wanting people to sign up. It wasn't just because this program is amazing and I know it is going to change the lives of not only the people who join me, but every single other person that those people's lives touch. Okay, so I know that the ripple effect here is there is such a magnitude of the ripple that is going to happen when the women who are meant to be here arrive, okay? And so that's not the reason why, but what ended up happening is there was a part of me that was operating under this sneaky, sneaky belief that my value and my worth were based on the outcomes I achieve. And my friend, I really wanted to put that long pause there so that you can let it sink in. Supremacy culture has taught us, especially us high-achieving, badass, over-functioning women and femmes, that we are only valuable and worthy based on what we can do, based on what we can achieve. And so without even knowing it, that starts to operate on a super sneaky fucking unconscious level. And it impacts our brains, our bodies, and then our behaviors and how we start to act in the world. And what I realized was when that was the story that was unconsciously seeding this whole thing, of course it wasn't going to work out. Because when it didn't work out, I could go and say, see, and this is how bad I suck at business, and this is why I shouldn't be doing this, and I just can't do it, and I just don't know how, and let me just go back to doing the thing that I do know how to do, which is just going to work for somebody else and doing boring-ass, shitty-ass therapy at some agency, right? That is what this story wanted, which is two parts, like I have two thoughts coming into my brain right now. On the one hand, it's, which is exactly what supremacy culture wants, right? Supremacy culture wants us to disown our power and our worth and our value and the amazing shit that we're up to and the amazing people that we are and the changes, the global fucking changes and the impact that we are going to make because when we do step into our power and truly own what it is that we're here to do and the impact that we're going to make, especially when it has to do with dismantling all of the fucked up systems that are in place right now, of course, supremacy culture's conditioning is going to creep in and oppress you. Like it's going to beat you down and let you know how bad you suck so that you can retreat, shrink, and go back to doing that thing that it wants you to do, which is staying in that status quo. And you know what, supremacy? Fuck you. Because if you know me and dear listener, I know that you know me, we don't play that shit here. We don't. Because here we choose that we are no longer participating in supremacy culture's conditioning. So no, I will not let supremacy hold me back and I will not let supremacy hold me down and I will not let supremacy keep me oppressed because I have a job to do here. Of course, other than living and breathing and being an amazing human and enjoying my life, but I have a job to do here. And my job is to support others in dismantling the ways this sneaky fucking supremacy culture's conditioning shows up in them and guides and informs every fucking action they take, every thought they think, and and every way that they be in the world. So no supremacy culture, you do not win this one. Instead, what you have done is you have given me the opportunity to create the rich and fertile soil as I am composting this entire experience. Like you have truly given me the rich and fertile soil that this next iteration of the sanctuary is going to be born from. That soil that this seed will grow and flourish. That is what you have done. Supremacy culture. Because through this entire thing, you gave me an opportunity to see where it is that all of your sneaky conditioning continues to show up in me. And so not only did you show me that I was operating from this sneaky belief that I am only 
valuable, only worthy based on what my achievements are, my outcomes, what I can achieve, how many successes I have, how many people I sign up, how much money I make, and all that other bullshit. Not only did you show me that, but you also showed me how I have been conditioned to set myself up for that failure. Because the reality is a month to market something as deep and profound and powerful as the sanctuary is quite frankly doing her a disservice. But when I bypass the experience, when I bypass the inner knowing that was coming through, when I bypass what was happening and not checking in with my body and my nervous system to see what is happening and the divine wisdom that wants to come through, what ends up happening is I set an unrealistic deadline doing a disservice to me and the sanctuary and to the women who are meant to be in this container and the entire experience as a whole. So I did a disservice to all of these entities because I got into supremacy culture's pattern of urgency. And so I set this very short, unrealistic time frame because that is what I am good at. Supremacy culture has made me a pro at setting unrealistic deadlines so that when I get to the other side and it doesn't work out and I didn't meet the deadline, I can be like, look how bad I fucking suck. Let me go back to just working for someone else, doing the thing, and letting this desire and dream die inside of me. That is what supremacy culture wants. Or on the flip side, and actually all together with it, what also ends up happening is that if and when I did set this unrealistic deadline, I would hustle my way through it. I would strong arm my way through it to show you, to tell you that look how I can do it. I can strong arm this. I can force my way. I can manipulate it. I can just push, push, push and power through. And then by the time I get to the other side, I'm so fucking burnt out that I don't have it in me to do the thing that I said I was going to do. And so friend, as you're listening, I want you to consider where in your life do you fall into these traps? of the way supremacy culture's conditioning shows up in you? Where do you start to just fall into these super unconscious patterns in the way supremacy culture has come in and hijacked our brains, our bodies, and our behavior? And I'll share one more thing before I go. And that is, in the midst of all this, actually, as I came through the other side, I went back into my coaching program that I've been in since the beginning of the year, Joyful Marketing with Simone Soul. And I went back and I listened to the module on partnering with our nervous system. Y'all know me. I am a pro when it comes to our nervous systems and relationships. That's my jam. And that's what we do here, right? Is our nervous systems and our interpersonal relationships with source self and other. And in the context that Simone teaches our nervous system stuff, she teaches it from the context and the lens of how nervous system reactions and responses show up in our marketing. And so as I listened to that module and I heard what she had to say, this is what I realized that happened. I went into a freeze response because supremacy culture has taught me the story, the lie, that I don't know how to speak about the magic. It is the medicine that comes through me. I don't know how to speak about that. I don't know how to share that and tell people about what it is that I do. And so I freeze. And then what I end up doing is I'm like, oh shit, but I need to make money or I need to let people know about this. And so I try to force my way out of the freeze by getting into the fight of, well, fuck that. I am going to figure out how to do this. I'm going to strong arm my way through this. I'm going to push and force and manipulate and do whatever the fuck I can to do this. Right? So I go into a fight response. And then while I'm in that fight response, I start to freak out and I start to get overwhelmed. And then I need another stress response to come in and save me from that pattern. So then I go into 
flight. And then I start to get into the busyness, the throwing spaghetti on a wall, the like doing anything and everything to just like try to do something and get something to happen. And the entire time, of course, I am so disconnected with myself and the divine wisdom that wants to flow through me. I am so disconnected from that. And simultaneously, here's the biggest fucking mindfuck of all, and simultaneously throughout this entire process, I am in a fawn response because I want so badly for you to like me. I want so badly for you to sign up. I want so badly for people to tell me how amazing this is. I look for people outside of me to validate what me and my higher power together have already validated. And this, my friend, are some of the sneaky fucking ways that supremacy culture continues to show up in us. And again, my invitation to you is to reflect on if anything I said sounds familiar. And this is why I want you to know how important it is that we learn to see and identify the ways supremacy culture shows up within us and in our relationships and learn the skills, develop the skills that we need in order to be able to see it, to spot it, to work through it so that when it arises, we can catch it, we can spot it, we can catch it, and we can course correct it. And so one might say that this launch, quote unquote, failed like the one in September 2020. And the reality is this launch was a huge success because I got an opportunity, first of all, to do it differently than I did back then. And I got an opportunity to see, acknowledge, recognize, and dismantle all of these other ways that supremacy culture on a sneaky fucking level continues to show up in me and my relationships with source, with myself, and with all of you. So now in full transparency, I know that we will be doing the sanctuary again later this year. And my higher power has not yet revealed to me exactly what it is going to look like what the invitation for you to join me is going to look like. It is going to look the same. We are still having three weekend long retreats with monthly calls in between. We're still meeting for nine months. You still have your online community. All of that is not changing. It's just a matter of how am I inviting you into this space and when do we begin? And at the time of this recording, I still don't have that information. Maybe I will have information by the time this episode is published. And of course, all of the links and all of the information is in the show notes. So be sure to check that out. And in the meantime, I just want you to know that this is some sneaky fucking insidious shit that we're dealing with. And this is why we need to do this work in community. This is why we need to do this work with others who can see the patterns who can spot it and help you to shift from it so that you can dismantle it within yourself so that you don't continue to go out there and replicate these patterns and all of the amazing work that you're doing and the powerful, beautiful life that you're living. And so my friend, I invite you, if you need to listen to this episode again, because it was so juicy, there's so much amazingness here. And let these words, let this transmission unwind these patterns in you. And take really good care, and we will be together again soon. I want to take a moment to honor and acknowledge the amazing support team that helps make this podcast possible for you. Starting with Diego Velasquez, our podcast editor and the talented artist who created our custom music. Ana Olvina, my wonderful assistant who creates all of our beautiful graphics and the transcript of every episode, which you can find over at www.fierceauthenticity.com. Biana Sandich, who writes our amazing show notes and does it so well that I bet you couldn't tell it wasn't me. 
the talented Jillian at Epoxy Studios, whose photography is our cover art and pretty much every other curated image that you see of me on social media. My husband, who puts up with me when it's 11.30 p.m. on a Sunday night, and I'm like, hey, babe, I gotta record a podcast episode. Like, right now. Is that okay? My higher power, whose divine wisdom flows through me to bring these messages to you. And last but not least, I want to thank you, my listener, so much for listening in. If you'd like to join the podcast support team, some ways you can do so are by rating and reviewing the podcast, sharing it with everyone you know, and if possible, making a financial contribution through the link in the show notes so that you too can be part of the team elevating this podcast and making it possible to bring to other listeners like you. I'm sending you so much love and we will be together again soon. (laughs) 